This is Priyanka. Today we are going to solve a problem on vapor compression cycle with dry saturated vapor after compression. So first I will read what is the given problem. The temperature limits of an ammonia refrigerating system are 25 degree Celsius and minus 10 degree Celsius. If the gas is dry at the end of compression, calculate the coefficient of performance of the cycle assuming no undercooling of the liquid ammonia. Use the following table for properties of the ammonia. So here the table is given that the temperature. So this is the temperature that given for the given limits that is 25 degree Celsius and minus 10 degree Celsius. Then for this temperature liquid heat, latent heat and liquid entropy is given. Now let us first understand what is the given data and which factors we have to find out. So if we observe there are two temperature limit is given. Now if we observe the temperature entropy diagram here the temperature T1 is equal to T4 and T2 is equal to T3. Now T1 and T4 are at lower temperature level and T2 and T3 are at higher temperature level. So we can say that the higher temperature that is 25 degree Celsius which is equal to T2 which is equal to T3. Now we will convert it into the Kelvin that is 25 plus 273 298 Kelvin and lower temperature limit that is T1 is equal to T4 is equal to minus 10 degree Celsius. And when we convert it into the Kelvin, it will be equal to 263 Kelvin. Now for these two temperatures, the liquid heat, latent heat and liquid entropy is given. Now we will understand this concept with the help of this diagram. Now we will move for the temperature of 25 degree Celsius. So where is the temperature 25 degree Celsius? That is T2 which is equal to T3 which is equal to 25 degree Celsius. Now for this temperature that is at point 2 and 3 liquid heat is given. Now how we can measure the liquid heat? So if we observe the enthalpy from the enthalpy we can measure the liquid heat. So at point 2 and 3 what is the liquid heat? That is 298.9. So if we observe here is the point 3 and this point 3 is on the saturated liquid line. So this is the saturated liquid line and on that point point 3 lies. So we can say that at this temperature T2 which is equal to T3 and the liquid heat that is at point 3. So liquid we will use here the suffix F. So we can say that HF3. So I will write here HF3 which is equal to. So if we extend this point 2 up to this saturated liquid line then also from this point to this point. So here is the starting point to this point. This total enthalpy or heat will be equal to HF2 also. HF2 which is equal to 298.9. So here for this point up to this point we have to write. So I will write here HF3. So HF3 is equal to HF2 which is equal to 298.9. Now next is given that is the latent heat. So what is the latent heat? So latent heat means change of phase. So what is the heat involved in the process of phase change method? That is called as the latent heat. So if we observe the latent heat is given 1166.94. Now if we observe for the temperature 2 to 3. So here the for the whole process from 2 to 3 that is this is the phase change process that is here point 2 lies on the saturated vapor line and this point 3 is on the saturated liquid line. So for the whole process what is the heat evolved is called as latent heat that is the phase change process. So 1166.94. So now we will say that it is both 
both the vapor as well as liquid both li both the phases are getting involved so we will use here the suffix f and g so how we can write this so at point 2 also and at point 3 also so i will write here h f g 2 which is equal to h f g 3 which is equal to 1166.94 so this is the latent heat now we will move for the next that is the liquid entropy so again we will move for this entropy point so at the point at the temperature of 25 degrees celsius so here at this point 2 and 3 the temperature is 25 degrees celsius now if we observe the point 3 lies on the saturated liquid line so if we extend this point 2 also on the saturated liquid line then up to this point from the starting point this total heat this total entropy is called as liquid entropy that is 1.1242 so here this entropy is called as now we will say this entropy that is liquid so we will use here the suffix f so sf and we will say it is at point 2 sf2 so i will say that sf2 which is equal to sf3 because for this point 2 and point 3 the same entropy is there which is equal to 1.1242 so this is the data for the temperature of 25 degrees celsius now we will move for the next now we will understand what are the what is the liquid heat at minus 10 degrees celsius so minus 10 means it is the lower temperature at 0.1 and 4 so for heat we will refer here the enthalpy so liquid heat liquid heat means what we have to refer where is the saturated liquid line so here is the saturated liquid line and we have to concentrate on point 1 and 4 so if we extend this point 1 and 4 uh, up to this saturated liquid line then this is the point and from the starting point this gap is there so this gap is called as liquid heat for the lower temperature that is at point 1 and 4 so how we can write this so liquid phase is there so we will use here the suffix f so hf we have to write here hf and for this point 1 and 4 i will write here hf1 but we have to write hf1 which is equal to hf4 which is equal to 135.37 now we will move for the next that is the latent heat so latent heat means what the heat getting involved in the phase change process so for the fall that is point one to four there is the phase change process is taking place actually from process is from four to one so here from four to one phase change process is taking place so we will use here the suffix fg now how to write so this is at both at point 1 also and at point 4 also so hfg1 which is equal to hfg4 which is equal to 1297.68 now we will move for the liquid entropy so again here the phase given is liquid so here is the saturated liquid line now we have to extend this point 1 and point 4 up to this saturated liquid line and here is the point of intersection now we will draw here now this is the point and from the starting point this this distance is called as liquid entropy at point 1 and 4 so for the entropy we will use here f s now for liquid we will use here f now I will write here SF1 but SF1 is equal to SF4 because if we extend this point 1 and point 4 it will intersect at the same point. So SF1 is equal to SF4 is equal to 0 0.5443. So this is the data that is so much important that how to write this data. Now we have to find out what is the coefficient of performance. So now we know what is the formula for the coefficient of performance that is h1 minus hf3 divided by h2 minus h1. Now if we observe what is the h1 so here we have to find out what is the h1 because point 1 
here h1 that is means enthalpy so point 1 in is in between saturated liquid line and saturated vapor line so we have to first find out what is the value of h1 then hf3 so hf3 here that is given 298.9 so we can directly take then h2 so h2 that is the point 2 is on the saturated vapor line but here also it is not given so we have to find out what is the value of h2 now how to calculate this h1 and h2 from this data so we have some important formulas to calculate this now we will move for the first formula for h1 now h1 is in between saturated liquid line and saturated vapor line so we have to take here h1 is equal to hf1 plus x1 hfg1 where x1 is the dryness fraction because what is the amount of liquid and what is the amount of vapor so we have to first calculate this x1 now we will just put the value that we know so h1 is equal to now what is the hf1 so hf1 135.37 plus x1 plus multiplied by hfg1 so here is the hfg1 that is uh, multiplied by 1297.68 now we have to calculate this x1 now we will move for the h2 so again for the h2 now point 2 is on the saturated vapor line so again we will use the same formula that is hf2 plus x2 hfg2 now we will just put the values now hf2 so here hf2 is here 298.9 plus x2 now this point is on the saturated vapor line so we know that the dryness fraction on the saturated vapor line is equal to 1 so we have to consider here 1 multiplied by hfg2 so hfg2 1166.94 so what is the remaining for the calculation of coefficient of performance that means we have to calculate the dryness fraction x x1 so how to calculate now if we observe here the entropy values are also given and if we observe the entropy at point 1 which is equal to entropy at point 2. So again we will write what is, how to find out this. I will extend this. Here this S1 is equal to S2. So how to find out this S1 and S2. So we can write this S1 is equal to. Now we have formula. S1 is equal to SF1 plus X1 SFG1. Now SFG means what? That is the entropy for the both liquid and vapor mixture. So here SFG we can split or we can write in terms of enthalpy. So this is most important part. So how to write? So S1 is equal to SF1 plus X1 HFG1 by T1. Now I will put here the value. So which is equal to. Now what is the value of SF1? That is 0. Point 5443 plus x1 so x1 is unknown term hfg1 so hfg1 that is 1297.68 divided by now t1 so here is the temperature t1 so we have to consider in kelvin that is 263 now we will move for the next that is sf s2 so how to find out this s2 now again we will write here or put the value sf2 that is 1.1242 plus x2. Now if we observe the point 2 is on the saturated vapor line. So again here x2 we have to consider here 1 multiplied by hf2. hfg2 that is 1166.94 and divided by t2. So here is the t2. So temperature t2 is 298. Now if we observe we have the known condition that is S1 is equal to S2 because this process 1 to 2 is the isentropic process. So here we can equate we can solve this that is S1 and we can solve this S2. So S1 is equal to S2 and only one unknown term is there X1 and we can calculate this value of X1 and we can put this calculated value of X1 here in this h1 and then we can find out what is the value of h1 and h2 so let us move for the calculations when we solve this s1 
that is 0 0.5443 plus x1 into 4.934 and s2 is equal to 5.04 now we have to show s1 is equal to s2 because here is process 1 to 2 is the isentropic process so here 0 0.5443 plus 4.934 x1 which is equal to 5.04 and from this we can calculate the value of x1 is equal to 0 0.91 now we will put this value for the calculation of h1 so here 135.37 plus 0 0.91 into 1297.68 which is equal to 1316.26 kilojoule per kilogram so this is the value of h1 and h2 that is equal to 1465.84 kilojoule per kilogram now we can put this value of H1 and H2 in this formula. So H1 minus HF3. So HF3 is here. Then H2, that H2 we have calculated and value of H1 is also getting calculated. So when we solve this, we will get the answer that is equal to 6.8. And this is the coefficient of performance.